Oh, hi. I'm Steve Taylor. I'll be with you in just a minute. Uh, I'm getting ready to go on this promotional tour across the United States, and I just had a lot of uh, last-minute things to do, some last-minute packing, a little last-minute ironing. Uh, you know, people have been asking me recently, Steve, why would you go out on a promotional tour across the United States? And, well, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I love people. Uh, secondly, uh, there's been something that's been bothering me, a controversy that's been brewing for quite a while, and I thought that it was time uh, maybe to clear it up. Um, it has to do with a, uh, a certain magazine that came out uh, last month. You can see the cover right there. Um, evidently, there's people across the United States that uh, don't think it's wrong to uh, make fun of my appearance, and I just feel that it's time to go out, meet the American public, and say to them face to face, yes, this is my real nose. Don't make fun, it's genetic. <sighs> Sorry, I just had to get that out of my system. I feel quite a bit better now. So, um, anyway, um, we'll go ahead and uh, maybe while we're getting things together, I can go ahead and show you around the house and um, uh, just kind of give you an idea of what the apartment is like, uh, where I live, uh, just kind of what things look like. So um, we'll go ahead and, ooh, oh boy. Honey, do you have any uh, liquid paper? So we got the kitchen back in there, and bedroom here. It used to be a dining room, but we stopped eating. And uh, here's something we probably never saw before, a gurgling fish face. Isn't that nice? Come on back here, I'll show you the office. That's my wife, Debbie. Uh, can you say hi, Debbie? <laughs> Isn't she great? Um, listen, I'm really running behind time. I hope you don't mind if I do a quick toothbrush uh, while I'm talking to you here. Um, you know, I've been getting a lot of uh, questions on some of the different songs on the record. And um, I thought maybe we could also take this opportunity to uh, tell you a little about some of those songs. Mm. One more song is a song called What is the Matter of Real Success? And um, the song was written initially to um, be the kind of thing where I wanted to, I hope I'm making a mess here. Um, Jesus said, what, what, um, it comes from a verse in the Bible. Um, in fact, I got the Bible verse right here. I'm going to show it to you. Um, it's uh, something that Jesus said to uh, one of his disciples. And I've uh, got it underlined right here in my passage. Hey, you can go in all close up right here. For what is a man profited if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? Nice, huh? Okay, never mind. J just make it two tacos. Is that bill for you? Um, yeah, and could you hold the mustard on those? What? Could you hold the mustard on the tacos? What? Okay, thanks. Here's my four. Just here at Noggles, um, oh man, we just, I really should take care of this shit. I'm really sorry about this. Just, uh, I don't think it's gonna come off. Well, I'll have to get it the plane. We're running really behind, so I'm just gonna have to get some food to go. Um, Boy, that's bad, isn't it? Um, I thought I would uh, tell you a little bit about uh, one of the other songs on the record that I've uh, had some questions about. It's uh, called Since I Gave Up Hope, I Feel a Lot Better. And uh, I wrote this song as kind of a look through the wide eyes of a college freshman that goes to the state university. And uh, he enrolls in an Ethics 101 class. And when he gets there, he finds out that the uh, ethics professor really doesn't believe that there is such a thing as ethics. Uh, the professor's philosophy of life is life unwinds like a cheap sweater. Since I gave up hope, I feel a lot better. So it's kind of a uh, satirical song, um, kind of a departure for me, I guess, don't you think? And uh, I hope you like it. In fact, maybe I'll go ahead and play it for you right now. I'll uh, put, pop the tape in here. man. Sorry about that. Must have... Must be the wrong side. <laughs> okay, um... Two tacos, right. Um, okay, um... Okay, um... Okay, um... Hold on just one second. Oh, gotta... It's got a little too far away here for that. Just having a little bit of trouble getting in close enough here. Let's just take a minute here. 
got the chains here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about this. Got the chain. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm glad we've been able to spend this time together through the magic of video. But it's time now to take that big bird across this great land of ours and come and visit your town. I've got my suitcase in one hand, my briefcase in the other hand, and a small taco in each pocket. In fact, the only thing I forgot to bring was enough money to tip that little man at the airport who takes your luggage. And since my flight is leaving on time, who knows? I may already be sitting in the audience, ready to meet you face to face, and still trying to scrape that toothpaste off my shirt.
to the wind and die My hopes were growing up Overcome See the wind With the sirens cry She beckoned, come the love Is there no return? Man. Now, begin, come alongside 
Permission. Oh, oh, we're instead. You're here instead. Oh, you had a German. There was originally a German crew yeah, well, a week, I think a week and a half German. ago that was going to yeah. be doing it. But they're not doing it. We're doing it. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, right. They were told they didn't have permission to do it. Oh. Oh, oh, boss. Oh, just to get a shot of the castle. Yeah, they were told they couldn't have permission. Oh. Now, oh. what exactly is the shot? I've spoken to people here since. What exactly is the shot you want? Yeah, all we wanted, we just had a shot of the castle and then we just wanted to get one through the through the gate. All it is, is it, we're starting off with, you know, green belt. Yeah. And, and the first opening shot is just Castle Ashby, England, just to give a oh, sense of, of where it is. just where it is. Exactly, yeah. just where it is. So you do it all from here? Yeah, no, we're not oh, going yeah, inside or anything. We didn't want to go inside at all. No problem. Just from Carry on. Right, okay. okay. Thanks all a right. lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. What's up to the German crew? Wherein lies the true spirit of Greenbelt? I believe it lies here.
far from the glitz and glamour of the main stage, away from the bourgeois pretensions and pious indifference of the ice cream vendors, here on this godforsaken wasteland of a campground, here in the hearts and minds of the punters themselves. To many, they remain faceless, nameless, and preferably sexless until they're married. But to me, they sum up the true pioneering spirit that is Greenbelt. And what better way to see that pioneering spirit in action than here, on the campsite I'm standing on, where the two young ladies to my right will attempt to put up this tent, using, between the two of them, three legs, three arms, and no tongues. If they can do it in the prescribed 90 seconds, they'll be awarded a pair of scissors to cut themselves free. Are you ready, ladies? And they're off. That's very good. Cliff, reading the travel at Greenbelt. Uh, you've been here a couple of times before. Why'd you come back? Do you enjoy it? I do, actually. I like it because, uh, for a start, it's nice to be part of something that's unique, and I think Greenbelt is unique. I don't know that any other festival has this kind of uh, uh, activity during the day. Uh, most of the people here, thousands of people who have come for the whole weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, uh, are attending seminars. And anybody that's interested enough to live in a tent where it might pour down with rain and spend the day learning about themselves, about God, about Jesus, about bringing all three together, I mean, I think deserve a, a great round of applause. And the chances of you, of course, wandering around the, uh, the campsite, sleeping in a tent, uh, going to the seminars, it must make it very difficult. I mean, do you ever try and sort of wander out in a disguise? Bono tried it last year, apparently. I did, uh, I did actually go out once without a disguise, and it, it, does, it's, it becomes really quite difficult. The thing is, if you brazen it out, of course, you can actually get quite away without being spotted. Good evening. I'm John Hawley at the World Bono Watch headquarters. Many of you are aware that at last year's Greenbelt, Bono of the world-renowned rock band U2 was spotted walking around the festival site disguised as a steward. Many of the festival goers, including myself, never noticed him. This time, we're ready for him. We of the World Bono Watch Society have assigned specially trained Bono spotters to tactical posts throughout the festival site. We now go to correspondent Phil Bagley outside the Rolling Magazine. Thank you, John. Bono spotting is not a sport for the amateur. To wear this cap, you have to earn it. By your body breathe, where the sun shines and the Afternoon, gentlemen. I'm wondering uh, what, what, are, what, what, what are the seminars you've most enjoyed this weekend? I think the one on the Christian approach to urinals and seeing a holistic view of uh, urinating and how it slots into the whole of our discipleship. You know, how we go to the toilet in a truly biblical fashion. <laughs> whether we should just be following the Israelite norms of digging a little hole outside the camp or whether something like this uh, plastic and metal urinal is it's truly biblical. Well, I think you guys know what this next song is about. It um, just makes the point that it doesn't matter if it's a so-called Christian college in the United States or if it's segregated churches down in South Africa. The racism in the name of Christianity can never be tolerated. This is called the We Don't Need No Color Code. Now, I thought it would be nice if we did this song in kind of an African tribal call and response format. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'll call the words out to you, and you scream them back to me as loud as you can, you got it? Can you make my ears bleed tonight? There we go! One, two, 
minds decide which lives are worth living and which lives are worth not living. Now, here's how we play. A big ship just sank. There are five people on the lifeboat, but the lifeboat is only made for two. I'll list the five people on the chalkboard, and you, class, will decide which three will be thrown overboard. Are we ready? Yes, Mrs. Arian. Good! First, there's an old, old, crippled grandfather. Second, there's a mentally handicapped person in a wheelchair. What's mentally handicapped? It means they can never be a productive member of society. Third, there's an overweight woman on welfare with a sniffling, whimpering baby. Is the baby on welfare too? <laughs> Let's not push, Mrs. Arian. Who else is in the boat? A young white doctor with blue eyes and perfect teeth and Joan Collins. Now, class, take five minutes to make your decision. Time's up. Well, class? Go on, the Grandma, cause he's getting pretty old. Throw out the baby or we'll all be catching his cold. Throw over Fanny and we'll see if she can float. Throw out the retard and they won't be rocking the boat. Very good. That was fun, wasn't it? Yes, Mrs. Arian! For our next lesson, we're going to do an experiment. Yay! 
We're going to test the law of gravity, just like Galileo, by dropping two objects out the window, one heavy and one light, to test which one hits the sidewalk first. Now what shall we use for the lighter object? I'm thinking of something small and square. An eraser? Good! And what shall we use for the heavy object? I'm thinking of something round and bouncy. Tommy, I haven't given you permission to leave your seat. Class, class, the bell is not rung. What do you? Oh, oh, class, put me down. Class, put me down this instant. What? What are you? Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh! At the top of the news, meltdown at Madame Tussauds. Tragedy struck today when workers at the famed London Wax Museum discovered the world-renowned wax figures melting due to high temperatures apparently caused by a faulty thermostat. Scotland Yard is currently investigating the situation and reports that a museum custodian is being held for questioning. Shameful, says the town. 
celebrity status only got in the way. I'm just not sure we're doing the right thing, that's all. Look, that's look, all. it was an accident. It was never meant to be. Besides, you're the one that's always talking about joining the under 30 upper class, you know, the new elite. Well, those people don't have kids. Have you thought about what the neighbors are going to think? What are the neighbors going to think? What? For all we know, the neighbors have already done the same thing, you know, it's... I don't know why you're getting so upset about this now. We've already been through this, and we've decided it's what's best. Besides, you don't really have what you call good motherly instincts. You know, you can't even raise houseplants. You want this kid to get all shriveled up like those rubber trees you had? Is that what you want? I'm sorry. I, uh, I tried talking to them, but they must have been from Brazil because they didn't understand a word I was saying. You know, this kid's crying. It's driving me nuts. Can you stick something in his mouth, please? Hey, listen, would you quit calling it it? I mean, just because we didn't name it. Yeah, well, you're the one that said it'll be worth more without a name. Don't come at me with that. You're the guy with all the great get-rich-quick schemes. Look, do you want to call this whole thing off right now? Do ya? Do ya? Have you given any thought to the fact that we just might get arrested? That's why we're using assumed names. Besides, they're not going to arrest us. It's our kid. And if they do, we can always take the coward's way out and drink some of your coffee. Honey, what do you want me to do with this? Cold. Just toss it. <laughs> fine cars. I drive them just like this. Well, EPA says 18. I know for a fact these will get at least 30. Mine gets 33. So are you uh, looking for a trade-in? Hmm. Not a bad car for Pinot. How many times have blown up on you? <laughs> Little Ford joke. Why don't we step into my office and talk business? Salesman to lot A. Salesman to lot A. Hey, you are going to sell this car. <laughs> I'm telling her that we're going to have to have the car for overnight. But she doesn't realize that we're just going to stick a little sawdust in the crankcase, maybe a little paraxo around the axle, you know, that old trick. 250 bucks, hey, uh, no problem. Fellas, is anyone taking that call for a lot, eh? 
Hey, it's all yours. No problem. You got it. Morning. Hi. So, can I uh, sell your car this morning? Well, we've uh, kind of had our eye on this little baby for a few weeks now. Uh, good choice. New Mustangs are fine cars. I drive one just like this. Oh. EPA says 20. I know for a fact these will get at least 35. Mine gets 40. Uh, so, I didn't catch your name. Oh, my name is Robert, and uh, this is my wife, Kay. Oh, and what do we have here? Hi. Really favors the missus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, d don't say that around the wife, all right? Now, now, about this car. Yeah, uh, listen, Bob, can I call you Bob? Well, I prefer Robert. Bob, I'm going to be honest with you. I sell one more car this month. Not only do I get a $500 bonus, but I get my name engraved on the Salesman of the Month plaque. It means a lot to me, Bob, and to my dying mother. Frankly, I'll do anything I can to sell you a car today. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm good. So, are you uh, looking for a trade-in? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, we are. Uh -huh. Well, uh, to be honest, uh, there's not much of a market for that particular model. But I'll have my man take it for a spin and see what he thinks. Well, see, we're not really uh, interested in trading the car. Well, uh, what do you want to trade in, your wife? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a kid. You? No, the, uh, the kid, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you are the funny one. You know that? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. You're not kidding? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You want to trade in your baby on a Mustang? Well, actually, you see, we wanted a Datsun Z, but I didn't feel right about trading an American citizen in on a foreign car. Now, honey, why don't you let me handle this, okay? It, it was a difficult decision. Uh, oh, oh I, I, I'm sure it was. <clears throat> well, boy or girl? It's a boy? It, 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 yeah, it's a boy. It's a boy. I haven't really done this kind of thing before, Bob. I know it's going to be tough determining a book value. Why don't we step into my office? All right. Assuming that your estimate of $10,000 for the child on the underground adoption market is correct, and I'm taking your word that it is a male child, the base price of the car is $6,200. The options on that particular model bring the total to 9,045, but I'm a nice guy, I'm gonna round out to 9,000, a little present from me. However, we've gotta figure in our uh, costs on the kid's resale, if you will. I figure a conservative estimate on the dealer prep and handling charges for the child is going to run about $1,500, leaving you a difference of roughly $500 to come up with. Now hold on. Hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. I don't make the rules, I'm on your side. I'm just telling you how the big man is going to look at this, assuming that he likes the idea at all, which I don't know. I admit I'm relatively new to this business, but I would guess this kind of thing doesn't happen every day. All right, I'll tell you what. I'll throw in the bag. Now, here we've got uh, a week supply of formula. We've got uh, some anti-rash cream. We've got a rattle. We've got a rattle. Uh, spare booties. We've got spare booties. Okay, okay, okay. I'll tell you what. I'll talk to the boss. But I'm telling you, the boss has kids of his own. He's Catholic. Well, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, we were going to put it up for adoption anyway. Why, why shouldn't we make a little something off of it? Him. Him. What you're telling me is it's okay for you guys to roll these trucks in, put them on the showroom floor, dust them off a little bit, wait for some poor sap to walk in, and you can soak them for every last dime he's got. But just because we're talking about a baby... You know what dealer prep on a baby is? I'm not talking about the nine months in the factory here. I'm talking about buying maternity clothes, Pickles. What about the stretch marks? S stretch marks. We're talking stretch marks. Also, Fritos and chocolate syrup in bed. 
But just because it's a baby, we're supposed to be nice guys and just give it away, right? Besides, we're going to make some rich, lonely, sterile couple very happy. Well, I, I tell you what, I'm going to take this to Mr. Morton. He's an understanding man. Um, I'll explain it to him the way you've explained it to me. He's got a lot of connections. It'll be our little secret. Now, I'm going to need some kind of uh, earnest money, just a simple deposit to show the boss if you're serious. Twenty dollar bill would be fine. Well, we didn't really bring a lot of cash, you know. Uh... Well, uh, you could just write me a check. Oh, gee, did you bring the checkbook? Uh, no. I'll tell you what I could do. Uh, I could give you a Pampers, all right? I could sign it. No, no, I, I, I'm sure that won't be necessary. Well, I, I, I guess that's all right. Um, here, why don't you sign this on the line right there, and uh, I'll just staple this on, and we'll uh, give Mr. Morton a call on her little hotline here. Hello, uh, uh, Mr. Morton. This is Greg. Greg uh, Gipper. Gipper. I remind you of your son. Yeah. Um, I've got a couple here who wants to trade in. Can I come on and talk to you? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, be a success is what you said, sir. Yeah, I'll come right in. Thanks. Mr. Morton? Come in. Call me Bud, because that's what I want you to think me as, as your Bud. What can I do for you, kid? Well, Miss, uh, uh, Bud, I I've got a rather unusual contract offer. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is what I like to ask my people. What do you think of the deal? Well, I, I think we could come out on top. If you get a contract, you got some earnest money? Well, sort of. Call me Mr. Morton. <laughs> back to the 700 Club. Well, it's tonight and it's in Nashville. The Christian music uh, industry will gather to honor the outstanding Christian performers of 1984 when the Dove Awards are broadcast live on the CBN cable network from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our entertainment reporter, Scott Ross, is standing by in the Tennessee Performing Arts Center right now with two of the nominees for Gospel Music Artist of the Year, Amy Grant and Steve Taylor. Scott, what's happening in Nashville right now? Well, in Nashville right now, we are doing a first, actually. CBN Cable has just for the first time come on here full-fledged as of yep. April 1st. That's an exciting thing. And for the last few days, we've been here, actually, since Sunday, enjoying the events, many of them, and listening to the music of myriads of people, Danuta, uh, all kinds of music. There may even be something here that you would like, you know? <laughs> um, it's good to see you. How are you? I'm doing really well. The Dove Awards are a big deal, aren't they? They really are. Uh, the Dove Awards are to the gospel music industry what to the secular industry would be the, the Emmys and the Grammys and the, the Oscars and so forth. And, uh, uh, but primarily this is, this is music. And, there, and within the last few years, uh, music has taken on, the Christian music has taken on a whole new tenor. It, it is a new impact, it's a new acceptance. 
And uh, a couple of those people that have been most influential in, in affecting this change in Christian music uh, are Amy Grant, the young lady seated next to me, and Steve Taylor. Steve's the one with the curly hair. That's right. <laughs> it's good to have you guys here this morning. Oh, thank I you. Sorry, you're not a guy, really. You know, you're not a guy. You're kids. Right, you kids. kids. Yeah. But it really yes. is. Um, within the last year, uh, Amy Grant has uh, enjoyed some spectacular success and uh, has realized a, a, a gold album. Is that a first for, for you, a gold yes. album? Yes. Um, actually, yeah, that was a first. And you were in Radio City Music Hall, which was also a first. Right. And Steve Taylor has a first. Do you want to talk about it? I got married. <laughs> that was my hey. first. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That's really exciting, because the last time we were together, you, you were not married, but you were praying a lot. That's right. I was looking for a girl, you know, who had a nice personality and had a Greyhound tour bus, and I only got half of that. What? Which? which and I'm which? glad you had that Greyhound tour bus because uh. that's going to make things a lot easier. <laughs> on the road. Uh, you're going to have to adjust to Steve this morning. We're all trying to do that. changes your film could have some real commercial potential in your uh, avant-garde market. Uh, what kind of changes did you have in mind? Inquisitive. I like it. Glad you asked. A. Why is it set in color? That's the premise of the whole film. It's an experiment in color and sound. Uh, great, pal, but uh, black and white is where it's at. Look at all you classicalist avant-garde filmmakers. You've uh, made it every year. You, uh, the French guy, the cockatoo, all shot in black and white. We're going to have to have a black and white print made for commercial showings. But the name of the film is an experiment in color and sound. Glad you brought that up. That title uh, will not do and must be changed. But that's what it's all about. Exactly. That's why it's no good. We need something vague and abstract like uh, dead babies in the afternoon. Yeah, what do you think, Frank? Another thing. The print's too good. What do you mean? Where's the scratches, the funny noises, the, the machine marks? This film has got to look like it's been shown on every projector from here to Cannes. Uh, chew on it, let your cat play with it, I don't care, just mess it up. All right, uh, what's your name? Martin. Okay, Marvin, we're, we're going to want to hit the college stick with us, right? Well, I hadn't really thought much about it. I'm telling you, pal, that's where the big bucks are at. Those kids will spend their dope money to look cultured. Now, publicity-wise, take a look at these sample posters. All specially printed to look like cheap Xerox copies. Uh, we need a quote at the bottom. Something vague and abstract like uh, a masterpiece, dot, dot, dot. Visual content unparalleled in 30 years, dot, dot, dot. Makes Warhol look ethnic. Attribute it to the village voice. Now, wait a minute. Hey, I don't make the rules. You want art? You gotta have a quote from the village voice. Now, if you want to get in the mega bucks, we got to have the personal appearances. In my opinion, I think your look is wrong. We need to hire someone else to be you. Someone with instant character, like uh, a blind albino with a goatee. No way. I tour as myself. All right, all right. You want to be yourself? That's uh, your derogative. But we got to change the look. Clothing will not do. I'll let you mess them up. Hair will not do. Two choices. Either buzz it all off or uh, try some of this. Instant gray. It'll give you that uh, byproduct of the 60s look. Am I right, Frank? One more thing. I like the film. Makes no sense. It'll go far. But it's missing one essential ingredient. Nudity. Now hold on. Hey, you don't like it? Go somewhere else. Check out the Bernstein's on 58. You can't even spell up on guard. You catch my drift? Catch my drift? You're doing professionals here. Am I right, Fred? 
All right, I prepared a list of responses for question and answer sessions after showing. All very nicely nuggets and unrelated. Doesn't matter what they ask, you stick with these responses. Uh, I'd like you to practice number one in front of the mirror. Try it. I don't know. What do you think? Nice. Any questions? Great. Now, you make those changes and I'll see you in about a week. Stick with me, kids. You'll go far.